10.1 is the biggest patch we've seen so far, and there are some new and exciting ways to gear your character in PvP. In today's video, we'll be walking you through some of the new systems and giving you a sneak peek at some potential game-breaking gear and enchants for Season 2. But before we get into it, we want to tell you about a brand new feature at SkillCap.com. For a limited time, website members can now submit gameplay clips to be reviewed by expert players. That means a rank 1 level player will watch your gameplay and provide you with direct feedback on what you can improve. These reviews will then be uploaded to SkillCap.com, where you can see other user reviews and learn valuable information you need to climb. These these reviews are part of our Master Arena series that teach you secret tips and strategies for beating your toughest matchups. Learn more about SkillCap.com at the end of this video and discover how you can gain 400 rating guaranteed. First up, we have some good news. Most of your gear will still come from PvP. The same three tier system we had in Season 1 is making its return, with green quality crafted gear having the lowest item level at 424, then honor gear at 437, and finally conquest gear being 450. This means two things. Number one, if you haven't had a chance to gear an alt before the season starts, no worries, since crafted obsidian combatant gear will be the same item level as your current epics. With a quick trip to the auction house, you can buy everything you need to get a fresh alt ready for season two. Honor gear will have an item level of 437 in PvP, which means it can replace any conquest piece from season one. For you BG lovers, this is a good thing. In the first few days of the season, you should expect to see tons of people queuing, but for you non-BG lovers, we won't be getting comp stomp until mid-June. In any case, if you want to stay ahead of the curve at the season's start, you should farm an entire set of honor gear right away. Getting a full set takes less than a full cap of honor, and you still don't need to worry about upgrades since gear will still scale. You will also have the ability to farm world PvP gear using bloody tokens and trophies of strife. The blue quality pieces will be 434 item level in PvP and can be purchased from the same vendor as before. Pieces can then be upgraded to a maximum item level of 447, putting them slightly behind Conquest pieces once again. Assuming Conquest is not capped, this means you should do world PvP quests and farm bloody tokens while still doing the weekly quest for Trophies of Strife. That way when you're gearing up, you will be able to get some epic pieces from world PvP. In Season 1, these upgrades were even bis for some specs, since it meant getting the exact stats you wanted, but in just a moment, we'll be explaining how this could change with the new system. Anyway, as the season progresses, you will find yourself slowly getting Conquest pieces. At the moment, it is unclear whether Conquest will have a cap, but we're assuming it will for the first few weeks, just like Season 1. Regardless, your goal each week will be maxing out your vault hoping to get lucky with a weapon in the first few weeks of the season. Just like before, you will have the option to convert Conquest gear into tier sets using the Revival Catalyst. And in a previous forum post, Blizzard indicated that the system should be more alt-friendly in Season 2 by having less time-gated restrictions. The Catalyst will become available six weeks after the season starts, which means week of June 19th. But before this happens, you can earn one tier token as part of the Season 2 Master Achievement by hitting 1800 in PvP or 2.2k in Mythic Plus. While it might be tempting to spend this token right away, it might be better to hold on to it for a few weeks and see what you can get in your weekly vault in order to complete a 4 set later on. But the glaring question is whether tier pieces will even be good in PvP. The answer is complicated for a few reasons. For one, many of the tier set bonuses are actually nerfed by 50% with a PvP modifier. For some reason, this doesn't apply to every single tier set bonus, but seems to affect most bonuses. On top of this, the stat distribution on tier gear is looking pretty bad for most armor types, with the exception of leather. At the moment, it's difficult to gauge whether the loss of versatility will be worth it for set bonuses that are nerfed by half in PvP. This shouldn't change how you initially gear, as no matter what you will be playing Arena every week, getting as much Conquest as you can, and then hoping for a good vault on reset day. So just as a mini recap, no matter if you are starting fresh or playing your fully geared main in Season 2, you should still farm Honor to stay ahead of the curve in the first few weeks of the season. Then no matter what, you should cap your Conquest every week while aiming to unlock 3 vault slots. While this is happening, participate in World PvP to get pieces that can be upgraded to 447 item level. And finally, hold on to your free tier token and wait until June 19th for the Revival Catalyst to become available. With PvP gear out of the way, let's talk about crafted pieces in Season 2. This is where things get interesting, because now any crafted piece can be made with an optional reagent to scale the item level to 450 with new trophies of Conquest. These can be purchased from the same vendor who sells Conquest gear. 
Note that these are identical upgrades that can be purchased with Honor 2, scaling pieces to 437 item level. The reason this is important is because there are lots of craftable pieces for every slot, allowing you to itemize more precisely. For instance, cloth wearers don't have the option to buy boots with haste and versatility, but in 10.1, you will be able to craft cloth boots with both of those stats, while being able to scale item level up to 450 for each crafted slot. You will then be able to upgrade any existing crafted piece, like the powerful haste proc legs or the signet of titanic insight. Crafting or upgrading any piece will require a new spark of shadow flame, which replaces the old spark of ingenuity. These will be earned from weekly PvE quests and even as a reward from the weekly PvP quest that you should be doing anyway. Before you upgrade your elemental lariat, you should know that its effect did get a slight nerf going into season 2. Lariat and the Haste proc leggings are just two examples of embellished pieces you can equip, but will now be joined with some new optional enchantments. One of these is called Statuette of Foreseen Power, which has completely replaced the Precognition PvP talent. Yes, that's right, Precog is now gone and is instead an embellishment on crafted pieces. For any caster, this will likely be one of your embellished slots. Melee players will have a new embellishment of their own called Figurine of the Gathering Storm, which adds a stacking damage buff for every second spent slowed. While final values might be different, this buff on the PTR was just under 2k additional damage per stack and stacked up to 20 times for each second spent slowed. If you don't like mages or hunters, then you will certainly be happy about this new effect. Finally, there is another neutral embellishment for all damage dealers with the Shadow Flame Tempered Armor, which adds a stacking damage debuff to the target. These three new embellishments join the existing list of optional enchants, which have all been adjusted slightly, including a nerf to the popular blue silken lining, which now gives less mastery overall. The one embellishment going away is the CC reduction effect that was previously provided on crafted gear. It has been converted into a primary stat buff whenever a CC is applied, potentially making it great for setup based specs. The PvP trinket set bonus now only increases main stat and stamina instead of reducing CC duration, which helps offset game wide nerfs to crowd control. There are also some entirely new pieces that could be worth crafting, but before we get into it, we should disclaim that these could be nerfed in PvP. First up, we have Undulating Spore Cloak, which provides healing per second above 70% HP and a 2 minute cooldown auto proc shield while under 30%. There is also a wand and even a two handed mace available for crafting with some pretty crazy effects, like a versatility buff for the wand and an on use damage effect on the mace. Assuming they are not nerfed in PvP, they could be part of BIS lists. For a full list of new crafted pieces, check out Wowhead or simply go to the Work Order NPC to see what's available. As for the classic question of do you need to PvE to be competitive, the answer is no once again. While the new raid does feature some pretty powerful weapons and trinkets with ridiculous procs, there is even a 457 item level mythic cloak from the last boss, but there's a high chance these effects will once again likely be nerfed in PvP. Of course, there are some off pieces with interesting stat distributions, but with conquest gear having 450 item level, these aren't at all game breaking. There is also a new zone to explore in 10.1 which includes new daily quests, rares, and a weekly world boss, but none of this seems to be relevant beyond the ability to progress in your campaign. So just to recap, most of your gear will come directly from PvP, but now you have some additional options to min-max. If you wanted crafted gear, make sure you do weekly quests to earn sparks of shadow flame. Then using your own profession or the work order system, craft any relevant pieces, including two embellished pieces, and using the new optional reagent scaling up item level in PvP. Prioritize creating embellished pieces first. Finally, laugh at PvEers who have an entirely new gear upgrading system. And if you want to gain rating ultra fast this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com. We've got hundreds of guides designed by the best players in WoW that teach you every fundamental needed to rank up fast. These now include user reviews where rank 1 gladiators and pro players break down your gameplay, where you can learn the secret strategies and advanced tips needed to crush the competition in Dragonflight. We make it our commitment to make sure you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. That's because our guides are proven to work and if they don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. Anyway, that wraps it up for this one. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.